as many Detroit Lions fans already know, the Lions have not had a 100-yard rusher since 2013. That's going on five years. We back. It's Motor City Sports Talk. We in the building. It's Late Night Grind. It's your boy, CJ Goodfellow. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon button so you know we go live and drop that heat. All right? And, you know, whew, been a long time since they had a 100-yard rusher. And a lot of people don't understand the struggles with Matthew Stafford. You know, you take away Todd Gurley away from the Los Angeles Rams. I mean, you look what happened to the New York Giants. They didn't have no run game last year. You take away Zeke Elliott. You see how how uh, how playing Jane, the Dallas Cowboy offense was without him. And just little cracks start to get exposed. And you can't run the ball for an inch, you know, a half yard or anything. That's very, very difficult to, to deal with. But not have never seen not seeing an eight or nine man box from Matthew Stafford. And I believe that's gonna change this year. You know, and I believe Kerryon Johnson is gonna be the the first running back to break over hundred yards this season. And I think it's gonna happen early this off this season. Early. You know, it's gonna happen early. And I know what they're saying about Kerryon Johnson. They wanna, you know, kinda, you know, man, you know, use you know, run keep him, you know, have a maintenance plan for him. Because if you're not familiar with Kerryon Johnson and you're not familiar with SEC football, which Auburn was a prominent college last year um, in the SEC and in college football, um, he was the offense, man. You know, I didn't know who the kid was going into this year. And I just watched a lot of SEC fo- uh, football on SEC Network and CBS and watching Auburn do the real deal. I mean, he was getting 30, 30 touches a game, probably somewhere almost 40 touches. Legitimately, he was getting... He was getting burned, man. He was legitimately tired. He he is a workhorse. But the Lions said they want to use him more of a slasher. He catch the ball at the backfield. Can throw the ball a little bit as well. He plays some wildcat. But I think that goes all out the window when you have an effective runner. He won't be running to the ground 30 plus times a game. It won't happen. Not in the pros. You know, but I think he's gonna be the primary ball carrier. I think he's just gonna be so much better. Then, then the next best primary ball carry is gonna it's gonna be his to, it's gonna be his to lose, you know. Now, if he get injured or something, that's a disclaimer, you know. And you know that happened. I was talking about draft blasts. This is where we go back and review uh, in a uh, past Lions draft. And Mikael Ashore, a guy I just completely forgot about out of Illinois University, of Illinois, you know, had tore his Achilles and he was he just never got back on track. He tore his Achilles in I think camp his rookie year, ran into Cliff Avery. So some of these things you can't call, but I, I think, you know, he's going to be so dynamic. And I think he's going to be, at some point this season, he's going to be so good that they're going to have to feed him the ball. You know, but he has changed the pace backs. He has the receiving back and, 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 and theoretic. He has the power back and blunt. So you don't look for him to get 20, 25 carries a game or maybe even not touches. But I think he's going to be so dynamic at some point in the game that he gonna break off good big runs, you know. He got good long, he got good stride and speed for his size, you know. He ain't no breakaway runner, but he can get to the second and third level. When he get powerful he, when he get to the second and to the third level. Don't let the frame fool you or the six one two thirteen frame. He got power. Most yards at the contact and most broke tackles tackles in college football last year. He got power and he got he's a gadget guy. He can catch it out the backfield as well, so. I believe he'd be the guy that's going to break the 100-yard curse, man. That's just my opinion. Um, most people probably go with LeGarrette Blunt. You know, with LeGarrette Blunt, like I said, he's really never been a workhorse running back. He's going to be a situational running back like everybody else, you know, as far as his short yardage and early yards or, or, or third and short or, you know, red zone, uh, power back. That's, that's going to be his role. But LeGarrette Blunt got some long speed as well. Don't count him out breaking off some long, long, long runs and breaking that record, as, breaking that drought as well. But I believe it's going to be Carry On Johnson that breaks the hundred yard route, uh, hundred yard rusher drought since 2013, going on five seasons. I think it's going to happen in the first two, three weeks in the season. I think he's going to be, dy- I think he's going to be dynamic, man. I think he's going to be so good that they're going to have to just continue, continue to get him the ball at some point this season. You know, that's what I believe. You know, a lot of people probably won't agree with me. But I think he's going to be so good early on, so so much better than the rest of the competition or, or the other running backs that he's competing against. And he's going he gonna, he gonna to be an integral part of this offense. And they had no other choice but to feed the beast. You know, and if I had to go somebody that'd be second, I guess I would go I would go with Blunt. You know, a dark horse. 
Amir Abdullah. I think it's going to be the dark horse. And if they get the blocking and, and creating holes and the offensive uh, uh, run game coordinator knows how to actually run the ball and know how to run the ball with his strength and the offensive line coach will get it together, I think Abdullah is going to be the black horse to do it, man. Y'all might call me crazy. If he makes the team, he's going to be the black horse to do it, dark horse to do it. And But I, I'm going with uh, with uh, Kerryon Johnson out of Auburn. But like I said, it's more C Sports Talk. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Late night video. And uh, much blessings to everybody. Appreciate everybody for subscribing and listening. And we growing fast. So continue to share the videos, man. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Somebody. Mama, Grandma, Daddy. Somebody, man. But y'all know what it is, man. It's Marcy Sports Talk signing off. Uh, peace. We gone.